here with David Stewart, the first um, basketball coach in Western Hornet history. He uh, leads all coaches with wins in basketball history, and he also um, coached in the mid-'80s football and in the early-'90s football as well. Um, Mr. Stewart, how are you doing today? Doing great. Appreciate you all your uh, work and research and uh, all the effort you put into the records and compiling all this information for Western Hornet High School. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, Mr. Stewart was a coach um, coming out um, in a couple weeks. The Dundee the Records asked me to write a piece about the 78 team, so I'm going to focus on that. But the point of these interviews is to give you an insight on how um, Western Hornet was in different periods of time, um, what the coaches and other athletes have accomplished during their time at Western and after their time at Western. And um, you can learn what they did in their lives and other things. So, um, so you coached football and basketball. Were there any other sports that you helped with? Uh, later on, I helped in tennis and track, track and field. Okay. Um, so, so you coach. So nowadays, whenever a new school is built, you know they start off with just JV and all this because they're not used to it. So, how did y'all? How how was the new school and how did the team come together? Well, first of all, the, the building itself and the athletic facilities were not ready when we came in to that starting of the school year of 1977 and 78. Um, there were a lot of adjustments that had, been, had, had to be made. And um, as far as athletics, uh, practice facilities were not available. The gym was not ready. The football field and baseball fields were not ready. So we started out uh, at a disadvantage to the other schools in our conferences that had those facilities from day one. Right, so where did y'all practice at? Uh, basketball, we started out um, our first few practices at Shawtown, Old Shawtown uh, Gymnasium. Had some practices at um, uh, Johnsonville and some practices once we got started at Ben Haven, uh, at Anderson Creek, and at Boone Trail. Okay, so you're all over the place. So your home games were played at Lillington for a little bit? We played some home games at Lillington when the season started in November, um, and we played some home games at Boone Trail. Okay. And y'all did, when did y'all, when was y'all's first official home game? I think the gym was finally ready sometime either late January or early February before we ever got to be in a, in a gym to practice and to finally play a regular season game. Right, so on that, the 78 team, you had multiple players go to college, so, and, I, and my, my dad played, um, was on the team, so the feeder schools had so many starters, so how did, like, how did that team well, now, we did have, your dad was on that team. Uh, we started out that first practice uh, at Shawtown. There was standing room only on the floor because we had anywhere from, I don't know, anywhere from 75 to 100 kids on the floor mm -hmm. who tried out those first few practices. Um, and we, you know, tried to give them a, a equal shot and but we did have quite a few numbers, even coming from okay. the three schools at that time. Right. So, is there any member from the '78 team? Are there any memorable games or moments? Oh yeah, there were plenty of memorable, memorable games and uh, exciting moments. Uh, getting the season started, uh, uh, going from place to place and, and practice to practice in different areas. But uh, we had a good nucleus coming from Ben Haven, from Anderson Creek and Boone Trail of players who were on teams in 1976 and 77 that probably totaled up anywhere from 65 to 70 wins right. if you added those three teams together. Right. So we had a good nucleus of, of, of quality players, good kids that came together and they meshed together real, very well, uh, even under the, the, the 
the situation, and you know everybody was worried about. Well, a bit, is this group going to get along with this group, and this school with with the other school? But we meshed uh, together uh, like a team should during those days. And uh, uh, as far as uh, memories, I, know, I remember we we lost the first home game mm -hmm. that we played at Western Hornet to Apex. We uh, played in a lot of packed houses. We were raided in in the east, and we were ranked in the state. Uh, we drew uh, everybody's best shot. Uh, memorable was uh, obviously winning the district tournament and enabling us to move on to the state tournament, which back then, uh, four teams from the east and four teams from the west made up the state tournament in Durham High School in Durham and uh, we were one of the eight teams that went to uh, this one site in 78. Right so the South Johnston game um, that was an overtime game that you won late right? That's right and we had played them first time we played South Johnston uh, was at South Johnston and which is quite a even back then and even today was a very uh, good sized gymnasium it was packed. Uh, they were ready for us, and they be, they beat us in a close game. Uh, they beat us when they came to us in a close home game. But uh, luckily, we were fortunate to win the one county right. that enabled us to go to the state uh, playoffs. Right, and then the state playoffs. My dad has said that y'all had a, a lost a late lead, and eventually you would have played Dominic Wilkins in Washington. My dad said y'all would have beat them, but I don't know about all that. <laughs> Well, it would have been exciting to have the opportunity to play Dominique Wilkins and, and Washington Compact. They were a powerhouse. Uh, yeah, we uh, we lost a, a late lead in the fourth quarter. Uh, a little point guard, well, not a little point guard, 6'1", six, 6'2", six, point guard for them just got hot mm -hmm. in the fourth quarter especially. And uh, we tried several people on him and tried several defenses, but... Uh, he just, it was, he was unconscious at that point. It was uh, Salisbury who, who beat us. And it was, uh, it was very disappointing uh, since we had the lead and knowing um, that we let things slip through our fingers at that time. So after 78, you had, um, after that, you had still had a few good teams. So are there any players or, um, from, from, so you made the playoffs four out of the next five years. Are there any specific players that helped you during that time period that you remember? Well, I know I'll leave someone out, but in those early years, you know, our starting five to begin with at Western were your dad, Randall McNeil, uh, Laverne Weich, Roosevelt Brunson, Charles Washington, uh, Herbert Gilchrist, and I think Willie Cameron started some, uh, Scotty McGilberry started some, Anthony Elliott, who was called the super sub, mm -hmm. uh, averaging double figures and did not want to start. Uh, those, uh, then you got, you know, I, I'll leave some kids out. I know uh, Alfonso Mosley down the, in the next few years, uh, the Boyd triplet, uh, not triplets, but the three brothers, mm -hmm. uh, Michael Boyd, uh, Gerald Boyd, and Anthony Boyd. All just super kids. Uh, I, I'll leave some out right. if I start going back right. farther than that. But uh, uh, so many on that team to begin with, uh, who's, who others who came down after them looked up to and and tried to emulate and right. play uh, uh, with the example that they left. Right. Um. So after winning 17, 18 games a year, nowadays most coaches would, Western Hornet would be a springboard to somewhere else. Why, why would you say you stayed at Western Hornet? Well, this, I've always, this was home for me. Uh, I went through school at, ben, at Boone Trail. Uh, I, I, they always say you can't come home, but during my career, uh, I enjoyed Hornet County and um, I ended up being an assistant principal at Ben Haven. Uh, I taught at Anderson Creek and coached. I uh, was eventually principal at Boone Trail. 
assistant principal at Western Middle, uh, teacher, coach, athletic director, assistant principal, and finally principal at Western Harney High School. So uh, you can come home in some, in some situations. So uh, it never occurred to me, even with the success we were having, I, I can't take the credit for that. I would give that to the athletes and to the student body and to the student athletes, but uh, never occurred to me to look for another position right. as far as coaching. Right. Um, let's flip to football. So football, um, in the mid-'80s, Western hadn't won more than two or three games in a year. Then you get there, um, some great players, um, and you end up going eight and two. So how, how were y'all able to turn two to three wins into eight? Well, let me, let me start out by saying the, the first few years of the program had good athletes, good coaching. Uh, the head coaches were, uh, worked hard, and all the coaches worked hard, and the athletes were, in today's program, would probably have won several, many games in the conference, but we were in a tough football conference. We didn't have a practice facility. We had to go off campus to a, a, uh, a field to practice that uh, Mr. Um, Thomas Fire provided for us. Uh, those kids during that day put in the hard work, and once we did get to have some success, it was, it was those who started out those days in, in, in 1977 that I wished could have had some of that success and enjoyed what these had. But um, we had some good kids come along who were dedicated, who got into the weight room and uh, came out to summer workouts and put the time into it, went to camps, uh, just made the difference in, in becoming um, a, a better program. And we had good coaches who put in the time uh, who helped out so much. So, and then in the 8-2 season, the two losses you had were by four, and I think I think it's like 7-2, to two or, and it's two close losses, so very close to a 10-0 season. Um, so my next question is, you've already kind of mentioned on it, is what you what did you do after you stepped down from coaching at Western Hall? Uh, after I stepped down from coaching, I went into administration. Uh, I got, uh, went back to school and got my master's in administration and principal certificate and um, later went to Ben Haven as an assistant principal when there was a middle school and then was at Western Middle when it opened up. So I went into administration and then came back into uh, administration at Western Hornet High School with athletic director and then back into coaching uh, during that time. Uh, but going back, if I may, to the eight and two season, we lost to East Wake uh, in the last minute and a half by a touchdown, and then we lost to South Johnson six to two. That was a crushing loss. Uh, even had we beat South Johnston and finished nine and two, excuse me, nine and one, all three of the conference leaders. Southern Durham, East Wake, and Western Hornet. If we if we had a beaten South Johnston, would have been nine and one. With one conference loss for each of those three teams, we could have lost out on going to the state playoffs by a mere coin flip because only two were able to right, go. Right. So that would have been frustrating. Yeah. But, but, uh, eight and two was a special season with some special players and coaches and uh, it was fun all right so i don't think i have any more questions anything you want to add to the game no um just uh so proud of the uh, western hornet eagles and the heritage that we have and uh, just hope that uh, that those uh, today can look back and know that there's been a lot of hard work put in by the student athletes by the coaches and administrators and, and family members to uh, strive to make things better for y'all. So uh, thank you for this and go Eagles. Yeah. Thank you for joining me.
Um, this is a first of many um, interviews. Um, just make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page so that you can be we can get enough followers so you can be alerted, and you also can watch many of our home games for sporting events.